Today, my featured guest is Dr. Bruce and Tony Hebel. It's pronounced Hebel, people. They told me. They told me. They corrected me. Now, BC Nation, we've all experienced the feeling, you know, the one where the very thought of a certain person or incident causes your chest to tighten and your stomach to drop. Most often, that sensation is a byproduct of unforgiveness. Someone wronged you, they hurt you, and you're holding on to it. It may not be consciously, but it's stuck inside of you. Now, mercifully, God has a game plan to give you victory over that inner torment. Rooted in scripture, uh, our guests today run a program called Forgiving Forward, where they teach you how to put God's plan for defeating the torment of unforgiveness into action and then give you the tools to coach others in the same victory. You can find them at forgivingforward.com. They're going to tell us a little bit about their background, what they're up to and stuff, but mostly about their calling and the work they're doing of setting God's children free from the torment of unforgiveness. So Bruce, Tony, Hebel, Welcome to Broken Catholic, number one podcast on iTunes for Protestants and Catholics. Go ahead and just take uh, a minute or two and just fill in some of the gaps in that wonderful introduction I did that left out all your your achievements from your entire life. Go for it. Uh, what achievements? Have we achieved anything? I don't, I don't know. So. We're just glad to be here. Uh, we're honored. Uh, we love getting to do what we get to do. Uh, our passion is to help people experience the freedom of the gospel through the power of forgiveness. Yeah. So that's what we do. Right. And this passion came out of our lives. We were a wreck. We were a mess. And God set us free. And then mm. when we experienced that, we wanted the world to have the tools, the treasures, the, the secret to freedom. And so ever since that happened, we have been full in. Just this is what we do. Yeah. Pastor for 30 plus years and uh, had our each of us individually had our own issue with the torment of unforgiveness. Mine was about a year long. And uh, then when God taught us through a, a, a friend named Bruce Wilkinson, he encouraged us to leave the little C church and go to the big C church and help uh, people forgive because most people who need to forgive need help doing it. And not many people are actually teaching them how. So that's so our call. We teach people how, and we actually coach them and help them do it. Yep. Yep. You know, this is powerful. Um, uh, so many times, I think, whether Protestant or Catholic, uh, we like to skip a very important part of the discipleship process, and that is allowing God to disciple us, right? To actually sit and come to know him in the silence and let him blow up all the, the garbage, the darkness, the torment within us from childhood wounds and and broken relationships, and just uh, disappointments of life. And we like to skip it. And we go out and we want to run and save others before we actually like let God heal us. So I love that you both get that, that you actually went through the healing yourself with God. Absolutely. And then you not only went through it, but you now see it as your duty, your responsibility, your obligation to now teach others what God yeah. taught you. Is that correct? That would be correct. Yeah. That would be correct. Yeah we, yeah, we we believe that if you don't deal with unforgiveness in your life, none of the rest of the discipleship process has a lot of fruit uh, because there is a third being, a fourth being in the in the equation, the, uh, a tormentor that keeps us from actually hearing God. And it's mm. there as a discipline. And God sends it, allows it, and it's what blocks us from doing the things God wants us to do and living the freedom and the victory God has designed for us to live. So what I just heard you say in that, Bruce, is that for many of us who struggle with finding our purpose, mm -hmm. like what's God's purpose for my life? What am I being called to do? What I just heard you say is, hey, the reason why you can't hear it is because there's probably another voice inside of you that's much louder, yeah. right? And it might be coming from unforgiveness somewhere in your life mm -hmm. yeah more likely than not what does mark 16 say mark yeah mark 16 says uh no mark 11 oh is it 11 okay this says whenever you stand praying forgive if you have something against someone 
That's right. In other words, if you come to God in prayer and you've not dealt with the and you've been wounded since the last time you talked to God and you've not dealt with that wound. God literally says, I don't even want to have this conversation with you right now until you forgive. Our unforgiveness impacts our ability to pray. We don't even think you can abide effectively mm. if you have unforgiveness in your heart. There's a block. There's because there's a, yeah, there's a tormentor there's a assigned by God to you because of your unforgiveness. Yeah. Mm. All right, so BC Nation, we're jumping right into this conversation, as you can see, right? So listen, are you struggling? Let's first deal with some of the evidence that you may have unforgiveness still in your life, okay? So the evidence looks like we've just addressed a very unclear uh, understanding of your purpose yes. or confusion around your purpose, yes. right? We've identified mm -hmm. that, okay? Uh, what other evidence could someone look at in their life to say, hey, I'm not even conscious that maybe there's some unforgiveness there, but this evidence is proving it to me. What other evidence mm -hmm. have you seen in the people that you work with? Well, there's a sign of torment. There's a sign, this what we call the signs of torment, which is the evidence, same thing. Mm -hmm. We see depression, mm -hmm. anxiety, fear. I'm not talking about you see a snake and you're afraid. I'm talking fear that grips you panic attacks. We see it in all the addictions. If there, if you have an addiction, whether it's to sex, to drugs, to alcohol, to food, if you have an addiction that you cannot get over, then there is unforgiveness is the root. We also see it in some physical issues. When that first started happening, when we would coach somebody through to forgive the deep wounds of their life, and they were healed in front of our eyes, that was the first time was like, what? We had no idea. And now we see it on a regular basis. Not all physical issues. I must say this, please understand me. Not all physical issues are because of unforgiveness. But if the torment is there and is hurting you, is, is hurting you in a physical way, when you forgive, you will be healed. I recently met with a woman. I'm not going to put her name out there because she's a celebrity, very, very well known. And she had a physical issue and um, it had baffled the doctors no one could figure out how to get bring healing to her what was the issue but she was it was pretty bad and in this place right here which is our center in georgia atlanta georgia i coached her to forgive horrific wounds in her life mm. when she was done that that issue she had was instantly gone i mean like she it was almost she was she was, she was shaking because she was healed right there immediately and that's what we see so what I'm hearing you say, correct me if I get this wrong, is that unforgiveness can actually uh, be the power um, behind a lot of the ailments uh, in our life. Like it yes. actually imprisons yes. um, us in these different areas. It could be physical uh, unwellness. It could be emotional unwellness, psychological unwellness, spiritual unwellness. 100%. And unforgiveness actually powers that and, and consumes us where our strength is not enough. And we literally need the strength of Jesus to come in and save us. Is this right or am I off? It, it, you're, you're, you're right, but let me shift it just a little bit for you. Literally, when we don't forgive, we're dishonoring the cross. And God is disciplining us with the tormentor to get us to repent, to come to an, into alignment with the gospel. Tell us more about uh, that practically in our lives. All right. Yeah. Well, in uh, in the Lord's Prayer, right? What's the one clause that has a condition attached to it? It's forgiveness. Forgive us as we, yeah. in, in other words, in, in, in equal measure to the in way the I way. forgive someone else. Right. But we would expect him to pray something different, right? We're actually asking God to use our standard of dealing with the people who wound us as his standard to relate to us. Mm. And multiple times Jesus says that throughout the gospel. But to us, the most shocking statement in all of Scripture about believers it has to do with forgiveness, and it's in Matthew 18. When Jesus is asked a question by Peter, when he says, how many times do I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Is seven times enough? Well, Peter knew the Pharisees said that if, you sin, if someone sinned against you twice, you had to forgive three times. If you want to be generous, after three, don't have to forgive, probably shouldn't. So when Peter was saying seven times, he was doubling the maximum of the Pharisees looking for a pat on the back. And Jesus said, how about 70 times seven, which is 490 times, mm -hmm. which is really an unlimited number, because if you get to the 460s and you're still counting, you probably have not been forgiving. 
<laughs> and then he gives us a story, a, a natural account to teach his supernatural truth as a response to Peter. And he says, the kingdom of heaven is like, and that's always a clue to pay attention because he's about to open the curtains of heaven to give us a glimpse to, as to how God wants things to work. And the story is this, a ruler came to collect debts from servants who owed him money. One's not equal, the other under the other authority, the, the servant. Owed the, the first servant he came to owed him 10,000 talents. He said, Pay me what you owe me. I don't have it. Then I'm going to throw you and your family into debtor's prison. Please, please, please give me time. I'll pay it back. Didn't ask for forgiveness. He asked for time. But the ruler gave him more than he asked for. He forgave him the debt. Mm which is a great story. And most people go, yeah, that's awesome. But we don't understand what a talent was worth in that day. A talent in that day was worth 60 mina and a mina was three months wages. So one talent is 180 months or 15 years wages for one talent. And this guy owed 10,000 of them. That's 150,000 years worth of wages. I just want to know what this guy wasted all that money on. I, I, it's a great question, but it's Jesus's story. We can ask he him made later. It up. Right? Uh, <laughs> so, but, but that's at 50 grand a year. That's $7.5 billion. That's an insurmountable debt. The guy should have been in a pretty good mood and generous, but he didn't. He found a second slave so, or servant who owed him a hundred days wages and gave him the same appeal, please give me time, I'll pay it back. And the first slave choked the second slave and threw him in prison. And the ruler summoned him and he said, you wicked slave, which is not a compliment. He said, I forgave you all that debt because you asked for mercy. Shouldn't you also have mercy on your fellow slave the same way I had mercy on you? And then it says, and the, the Lord, the little L, moved with anger, rightfully so, handed him over to the torturers, until he should repay what he owed. Well, what did he owe at this point in the story? He didn't owe the money, because if you forgive a debt, you can't reclaim that debt. But he owed something. What did he owe? He owed mercy to the next guy, or what we call forgiving forward. And the torture in that day was a man assigned to the jail who was skilled at exacting the greatest amount of pain for the longest amount of time without someone passing out or dying. Think Braveheart, the guy at the end of the movie. Hmm. We all know what torture looks like. or And so... That's that's the answer. And then Jesus leaves the parable, which is significant. Really important. Because he's no longer telling a pretend story. He's actually addressing Peter's question. He says, My heavenly father will do the same to you. That's Peter, leader of the disciples. All I mean, these are the key leaders who would get a special break if anybody's going to get one. He says, My father will do the same to you if each of you does not forgive your brother from your heart. Mm. The same what? Well, in the context of Matthew 10, it cannot mean anything but hand you over to the torturers. And, and, I, and, and that word torturer in that, day, uh, in that text is used 18 times in the Greek New Testament. Of the other 17 times, there's maybe one exception, but every other time it's used in connection with hell or demonic activity. Remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus. The Lazarus is the beggar. Mm -hmm. Rich man wouldn't help him. They both died the same day. Lazarus mm -hmm. woke up in, in Abraham's bosom, which is a place of comfort. The rich man woke up in hell using the same word, being in torment. God literally gives authority for demonic forces to torment us when we don't forgive. And it's not because we've been wounded. It's because we haven't forgiven the wound. Mm -hmm. you have a story you want to tell? Mm -hmm. Which one? Okay, I had a lady I met with a couple of days ago. She, her husband left her four years ago for another woman, which is common in our world, you know. Uh, and there was a lot of other stuff she had dealt with in her childhood. So I explained this story to her, explained what, what was going on. She was at the point, actually, when I first met her, she could barely talk to me. When I went to shake her hand, it was like a wet noodle. She looked at me and the only demonstrative, the only thing she did was she looked at me and she went like that. She put a, like a fake gun to her head with her fingers. And I knew, boy, this woman is in torment. She'd been to counselors for 20 plus years on all kinds of meds. Nothing worked. So I met with her and I coached her to forgive. Uh, in her case, it was her father and her mother were the deepest wounds. We go for the deepest. We go for the root. What is it? Where did it start? Let's get off the surface. Let's get down deep. And we have questions we ask and God reveals. She forgave them both. And this woman literally changed in front of my face. I wish 
I had taken a before picture because the joy, she said, I have never felt like this. I feel like I'm floating seven feet above, above the earth. Um, she went home. I find out later that she had met with her family or children just in general, you know, met, went to take care of the grandkids or something. And they went, mom, what is different about you? Something's odd. This is bizarre, mom. And she even, uh, she, we, we, when we teach this message, we encourage people who forgive, this is maybe shocking to you, but we encourage them not to go tell the person they have forgiven that they have forgiven them. Hmm. Forgiveness is between us and God. It is not our responsibility to go to that person. And for multiple reasons, one being when we go to someone and say, I forgive you, what we're hoping is they're, they'll repent. And they'll come back to us and they'll, they'll you know, tell us that they're wrong and they shouldn't have done this or whatever. That, that can be a form of manipulation. So what we say is just trust God to move in, in your ex-husband and your mom's hearts and you wait on God to do something. So she didn't say a word. 10 days later, she gets a phone call from her ex-husband and he says, I need to meet with you. He never calls. It's been four years. And he needs, so she meets with him. They spend, spend two hours together. He repents to her of all the things he had done to her during her marriage and things he did she never knew. He repents to her for leaving. He asks her forgiveness. He then says, I know I don't have to pay you alimony anymore because of your age, but I'm going to continue paying alimony. I want to help you. I mean, it was just unheard of. And she just couldn't believe it. And she's continued to other people in her life have communicated that this woman has changed completely. And that was, I met with her for two and a half hours. And in two and a half hours, everything in her life changed to the point where she's getting off of her meds now. And that was last week. Yeah. Okay. So for a person <laughs> listening right now that says, Tony, that's an amazing story. You know, I'm so happy for that woman. But my situation's different. You don't know the hurt I've gone through, Tony. You don't know the wounds I've incurred. I cannot. Forgive this person, that person. You've heard the saying like, oh, I'll forgive, but I won't forget. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What do you say to that person right now that thinks their situation is just so different than everyone else out there and that forgiveness is not even possible for them? I think what I would say to them is, are you enjoying your torment? Exactly. Ouch, that hurts. It does. But here's here's why I say that. Because there's a big question that follows up with the Matthew with with, with Jesus' story. And the question's why? Yeah. Why does God discipline? And the torment is a discipline. Why does God discipline unforgiveness more harshly than any other sin we can commit? And and this is what we're we're leading up to is the the foundational why to forgive. Because a lot of people will give a, a, a surface why, but then we don't get to the foundational why. What's the why? The why is because forgiveness is at the core of the gospel. You can't cut the gospel anywhere it doesn't believe forgiveness. In Luke 24, when Jesus is meeting with his disciples for probably the last time before he ascends into heaven after the resurrection, he says, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and rise again on the third day so that. Now, that, so that's a purpose clause. What does that mean? That means what proceeds is not the main goal. It's the means to the main goal. And as big of a deal as the death and resurrection of Jesus is, it's not the main event. The main event is follows that. So that repentance for forgiveness of sins be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. Because the gospel is simply this. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned, not only did man lose a lot, but it cost God something. It cost us the relationship we were designed to have with God, and it cost, cost God the glory we were designed to give him. And he said, I want my kids back and my glory back, but there's a problem. There's a sin debt. It's more than 150,000 years worth of wages. There's zero possibility they'll make it right. Jesus, is there something you're willing to do about this? Sure, Dad. I'll take care of it. I've got more than enough righteousness. So he comes to the planet, lives 33 and a third years perfectly, and stretches out his arms. He said, it is finished. What was finished? The payment for the sin debt of the world. First John 2, 2 says, he, Jesus, is the satisfaction for our sins, but not ours only, the sins of the whole world. 
which means every sin ever committed by anybody anywhere on the planet, past, present, or future, was paid for by Jesus on the cross. So when we say, and then three days later, the father said, I agree. I receive the blood of my son as payment in full for the sins of the world against me. So when we say what you are asking, God may forgive, but I won't. We're saying the blood of Jesus may satisfy God for what they did, but I need something more than mm. the blood of Jesus. And the father will not handle easily the crowning achievement of his son being devalued by the very ones he achieved it for. How do we say it? The, the blood of Jesus covers all sins, including the ones that wound me. Mm. So when we don't forgive, we're saying the blood isn't enough. All right, BC Nation, that is some hard truth. And didn't Bruce show up like a pastor there? I mean, I felt like he was on a stage. I just felt it, right? He had a pulpit in front of him and everything. Listen, this is some tough love, right, it from is. heaven. It really yeah. is. And, you know, going back to what you both said earlier, you know, talking about the uh, the parables of the uh, the servant and the master and mm -hmm and forgiven the debt owed, you know, Jesus uses that unsurmountable or unachievable amount of repayment, as you said, mm -hmm. right? It was like many lifetimes worth of, of debt. So that tells us that that servant, there's no way they could ever repay that debt. It was an unrepayable yeah. debt within his own strength. Mm -hmm. Right, so to speak. Absolutely. And isn't that the whole story of the gospel? Absolutely. That man so wronged divinity that on his own, in his own strength, our own strength, there was no way we could ever repay that debt. So we needed God to come down and do it for us. The yeah you know, unpayable debt he handled. But then but, God asks of us to repay the payable debts between us humans. So when someone wrongs us, that's a forgivable debt. We just don't want to do it, but it's completely within our strength to do it. It's actually, it's actually a little, maybe even a little bit deeper than that. It's an already paid debt. Yeah, Jesus already paid for it. It, it, it's yes. an already paid Agreed. debt. It's like if I get in a car accident, I get what do I want from the, the guy, the person who runs a stop sign and hits me? What do I want from them? The first two things I ask for is his identification and his insurance card. And if his insurance card is valid, I don't have to worry about my car because I know he's not covering it. There's a big company outside that's promised to take care of it and make it right. Jesus is already paid for. It. It's paid. And so I think one of the reasons the torment comes is because when we don't forgive, the watching world is saying, we're not smoking what we're selling. Mm -hmm. You want us to believe in the forgiveness of God, but you won't share it with someone else. And so God disciplines it. So we live lives of forgiveness that, yeah. that set us free, but also become a witness to the world around us of the power of the gospel and the, the efficacy of the cross and the blood of Jesus. All right. So BC Nation, the hard truth here that we're hearing and you're being reminded of is that when you hold on to unforgiveness between you and another person and you refuse to forgive them, you are rejecting the gospel that you preach, the gospel of Jesus Christ, because the entire gospel message is about God forgiving you. Absolutely. That's what it's about. Bottom line. Right? So like yeah. you're rejecting it. You're saying, God, I reject it. I'm going to preach it still but I reject it in my heart. I will not live it myself. You yes. forgave me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Throw your hands in the air, right? But I'm not going to forget, forgive this person. So there's that hypocrisy that God detests. There's that pride that God dis detests. Hence, the discipline. And God disciplines those he loves, the Bible Absolutely. says. Absolutely. So if God is disciplining you with torment, as Bruce keeps reminding us, thanks, Bruce, uh, <laughs> and, and, right? And, and God is disciplining you with torment. It may look like physical illness. It may look like uh, chronic depression, chronic disappointment, uh, chronic uh, disappointment, sorry, chronic anxiety, Right. If God is disciplining you with these torments, it's because he loves you and he's waiting for you to stop rejecting his love and his message of forgiveness. 
So like the balls in your court, BC Nation, this isn't God being a bad God. This is you, well, being a disobedient son or daughter. Absolutely. Like you're not stepping in and, and accepting and receiving God's love. You're saying, no, Daddy. Listen, I want others to forgive me really quickly, but I'm not going to forgive them because I'm actually more important than them. Yeah. Do you know how important I am, God? Yeah. <laughs> like they hurt me. I'm not letting go of that. Well, brothers, sisters, that's pride, yo. That is just spiritual pride in disguise with a mask on. Right? At the end of the day. All right, Bruce, Tony, we got the problem. What's the solution? How do we actually do this? Exactly. Like, exactly. What, is it, what does simple. it look like? All right? So I show up with you. Uh, Tony, it sounds like you're the softer part of the, the Bruce Tony team. You know, you're the heart. Maybe he's the head. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. Right? Yeah. But like, you know, she's these certainly people. the cuter. She's the cuter one. All right. You said it. Right? So like. I show up and we start digging into my life and you're like, hey, Joseph, I, listen, you seem like a great guy, but you know, I think you got some unforgiveness there because I'm hearing you complain about this, that, and them, and this, and that. You know, listen, how's your misery going, right? Like, right. That's, that's where Br Bruce opened the door, walked yes. in, and he said, how's your misery, Joseph? I'm like, hey, back <laughs> off, buddy, right? <laughs> but what do we do now? Like, exactly. is this like... Like, what if, what if I didn't forgive my father, but he's mm -hmm. dead now? Good question. Do I picture and imagine him in a chair and I start yelling <laughs> at him like the therapist told me to do? Is that going to cause forgiveness? I Absolutely know I'm, I'm, I'm bringing levity to this, H but this is work? what, but this <laughs> is what people, work? this is what people pay for. I know. And yeah. that's sad because... I've met with people who have been counselors two times a month for nine years and still not free. Mm -hmm. And in two hours, they walk out different. So this is the deal The the, um, I always laugh when I say that my granddaughter says, this is the deal. Um, she's young. Anyhow, we, well, this is what we, I would tell you, I would say, first of all, we don't forgive people as much as we forgive wounds. Just to say, I forgive my dad won't work because that's staying in my head. And Matthew 18 says, until you forgive from your heart. Mm. So you need to forgive from where you were wounded. So mm. you go down to the place where you were wounded. It's like I see arrows in your heart and every arrow is a wound that happened to you. And it, and it, or it could be a set of words that were spoken to you that you can't get out of your mind. We go into the heart. So the way we do that is we forgive wounds and we, we forgive how the wounds made us feel what the wounds did in our lives that affected us for the rest of our lives. Um, so we go through what we call the protocols of forgiveness. The, we have seven, but the first five are what we deal with to deal with forgiveness. The last two are how to live it out. So the first thing we do is we thank God for forgiving us mm. because we need to get an attitude of gratitude before we even begin and recognize just how much we've been forgiven. Mm. So we spend a little time doing this. It's all out loud. Um, it's really good if you do it with somebody who can listen to you as an accountability. And then the second thing we do after that is we repent, confess our sin of unforgiveness. Mm. We want to get that out of the way. We got, want to have a heart, clean heart before we begin. Recognizing so, we dishonored the blood of yes, Jesus. That mm -hmm. we malign is what when Hebrews 10 talks about. When we don't forgive, it's like we're stomping on the blood of Christ. Mm. So we deal with that secondly. The third thing is, is we um, ask God, we don't want to be God. So we ask God, who do I need to forgive and for what? Because he knows where the torment began. He knows what it is that is hurting us the deepest. He knows what needs to be, needs to be dealt with. And we give it, like you were talking about earlier, we, we give it time and silence. We literally just wait. And I ask the client, I say, what is, who is the first person that has come to your mind or your heart? or you're, that you're hearing a name or seeing a face, who is that? Can I interject something? Sure. We've coached hundreds and hundreds of couples in crisis, 100% of the time. It's never not been the case. The wound that's driving the, conf the, the torment that's causing the conflict in their relationship predate the couple ever meeting. 
always yeah. before. They and brought so it. They brought it into the marriage with. Yeah, them. and they don't even know it. And oftentimes, it's a root that the Holy Spirit yeah. will bring up, and so He'll bring it up. And so we go with that person. No, and it's funny. It's so funny how they think they're coming in with this issue with that person, and then all of a sudden, this random person from their past they haven't thought about in years comes to their mind. That's right. So we ask the Holy Spirit to then, okay, what do I need to forgive them for? And we'll ask a series of questions to get deeper into the heart. Um, and but we walk through. We forgive the wounds. So we say these words. Lord, I choose. It's a choice, not a feeling. Jesus didn't feel like forgiving when he hung on that cross. I choose to forgive this person, my dad, my father, for, and we list the things the Holy Spirit brings to our mind, for being an alcoholic and making me feel embarrassed. I couldn't bring anybody home. I couldn't bring my kid, my fam, my friends to the house. I choose to forgive him for having an affair with my mom and dishonoring my mom and our family. I choose to forgive him for not representing God the Father to me. I choose to, and we just list everything the Holy Spirit brings to our mind. And we let it go deep, 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 as, as far as we can until nothing more is coming to our mind. And we wait, we give silence, let me let silence speak. And then when we think we have completed everything that he has done, wounded us, we say these words, I declare my father is no longer in my debt. I transfer all of his sin, all of his debt to the cross where Jesus paid it all. And then we seal, that's number four. The number five is we seal this forgiveness by blessing him. And we're doing this between us and God. We're not, if, if, if God gives us an opportunity, we bless a person, but sometimes he could, it, that doesn't happen. So I choose, or I ask you, Lord, would you please bless my father right now by, and we ask God to give him and do things for my dad that would make him happy, that would make him feel blessed. It's not about, I choose to bless my, or God, would you please bless my dad by making him repent to me? No, it's not about that. <laughs> would you please bless my dad by increasing his effectiveness at work, by blessing his marriage with my mom, by whatever. Now, if and, the- and oftentimes- Oftentimes, we, we encourage them to bless them in the area in which they wounded you. So mm -hmm. if they uh, stole money from you or whatever, God bless them financially. What, move into blessing. Yeah. and then So, we, so just to be clear, we're actually right. asking God um, to do good for the person in Absolutely. their own life outside of even our relationship Absolutely. with them. We're, we're literally just wishing their life to go well with God. Yeah. Is yes. that correct? It's correct. the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. And while we yeah. were still his enemies, Christ gave us, God gave us the greatest blessing of all the death of Jesus for us to, mm -hmm. to redeem us from our sin. So yeah, it's blessing. It's asking if vengeance, unforgiveness wants vengeance, blessed, uh, forgiveness wants blessing. So if, mm. if we can't bless, if the, if the person cannot bless, they're like, they have nothing to say, then that means there's something that we've missed. Yep. All right, Lord, what is it we've missed? What is it I'm holding against my father? What is it? How did he wound me? That is really hurt. That's deep. That's impacted me. And so we wait and let the Holy Spirit reveal that. But when it's during that blessing time that the torment leaves, I mean, we see crazy things and we didn't go into this expecting any of that, but we see God move. Yeah, you don't have enough time on the podcast to tell oh you all gosh. the stories. But oh, see, I bet. We that's see crazy. God do. So that's when the freedom takes place. It's during the blessing. Yeah, and that makes sense. Yeah. That makes if sense. They're, so if they're deceased, you can still bless them. So we say things like this, God, would you please tell my father I have forgiven him? Because he knows all, he knows all now. He knows the truth now. Mm -hmm. So would you tell my father I have forgiven him and that we're okay? And would you please bless his memory and the people that know him? May they think of the good things he did and not the things that were wounding. And would you bless mm. his descendants? Would you would you use his life to make an impact on the descendants, the good things that he did? You know. So those are some of the ways we bless um, those who have deceased. And we when we forgive intentional wounds, unintentional wounds, expectations that haven't been met, um, and the specific things that have anything been done. Anything that hurt us. Anything that hurt. It's all about the pain. Yeah. Go after the pain. All right. So this sounds awesome. Okay. I've experienced this myself, by the way. Awesome. I've, 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 I've hired, you know, people to do this with me, right? I think I paid $500 for a zoom session. Um, and someone walked me through this and it was two hours and yeah. it was literally them facilitating me having a conversation out loud with Absolutely. God. Absolutely. That's it. Right. And the Holy spirit just showing up and revealing stuff. And, uh, I had chronic pain in my neck from a car accident, you know, and all of a sudden, like, 
it shows up like I need to forgive the lady that cut me off, cut in front of me and caused me three and a half years of wow. insurance and, uh, you know, all this manual therapy and just pain and loss of work and all this other stuff. Like I don't even know on a subconscious level, I was resenting that that individual. I had bitterness bottled up inside of me with her, even though like I didn't think of that consciously. So I had to set her free in that moment. Right. And, and she, it wasn't her fault. She, well, it was her fault, but like she was just dealing with her own stress. She wasn't paying attention. She admitted it and she thought she could run the, the red light and she did. And boom, my life changed for over three years because of that. Right. So I share that because one, as I'm forgiving her, my neck starts to free up the, 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 the lock, the, the, the tightness and the muscles and contraction. And I was just like, what the heck? And then my face starts to leak. My face starts <laughs> leaking and I wasn't even sad about anything. Yeah. And it's like all these emotions just released through li in liquid form out of my heart that I don't even know was there. So BC Nation, I'm sharing that vulnerability with you to let you know, even if you don't think you have a wound, mm -hmm. you probably do. Absolutely. You just don't know it. Look at the evidence. Are you tormented? That are you tormented in any way? Listen, that doesn't mean your life is meant to go all sunshine and roses. You'll still have storms right. in life as a right. good Christian, uh, you know, child of God. But you're going to have this peace in your heart as you go through the storms. And if you're lacking the peace, yeah. that's the evidence, right? And so many people, right, we're dealing with mental illness. Suicide rate is through the roof. That's especially, good. I think now the, the, the highest statistic is like men over 40, right? Committing suicide left and right. These are the guys I coach. They got the money, they're crushing in business, but they're miserable. They want to take their own lives. Unforgiveness is at the core of it all. I've seen yeah. it in my own coaching work. That's why I wanted to have you both on the show today. Tony, you uh, really the, kind of this, led us through this here. All right, Bruce, you're a past. I've talked too long. You got to take the stage back. The I get it. Go for suicide, it, Bruce. The suicide you're talking about is typically because of a self unforgiveness. And the number one person mm -hmm. we coach people to forgive is themselves. Yeah, shame. And, Men and carry we'll, shame. We'll, we'll yeah. forgive her, but we won't forgive us. I worked with a guy yesterday. He 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 forgave everybody. He kept wanting himself to do more. And so oftentimes we have this. I got to do so. It's shake and bake and I help. I've got to do something. But the yeah. blood of Jesus covers. If God's satisfied for what I did with the blood of Jesus, why can't I be? So forgiveness is simply, if we're just going to sum it all up, applying the blood of Jesus as payment in full yeah. for every wound I ever have or will suffer. It's accepting the blood of Jesus, applying the blood of Jesus as payment in full for every wound I ever have or will suffer. It's enough. The now, enough. now, BC Nation, you may be nodding your head right now and saying, yes, I believe that 100%, yet I still have torment. Well, that's because the belief is stuck in your head and it hasn't moved to your heart yet. You haven't yeah. done it. You haven't, you haven't experienced. It. Yes, you have to experience mm -hmm. God's forgiveness in your heart and actually open your heart to receive God's love. And as Bruce is saying, for us men, like that's really difficult sometimes. Like we love our wives, we love our kids, but we won't love ourselves. We won't give ourselves permission or the space or the grace to to forgive ourselves and receive God's forgiveness and love and compassion. Like we just don't know how to do it. So yeah, but it's simple. It's that, simple. All right. And it's so a tell us it's about a simple. It's a transaction. It's all that Tony said. But it's a choice. It's not, I want to, when we're coaching someone, people says, Lord, I want to forgive. We go, eh, eh, I want a Mercedes. I bought a Toyota. Right? <laughs> wanting and choosing are not the same thing. So, so it's this a choice. It's a so, transaction. It's applying yeah. the blood of Jesus. And I it's, think you're addressing a very important thing that my listeners right now, they're probably stuck somewhere in that, which is, well, I will forgive that person when God uh, uh, puts the feeling in me to forgive them. But until then, I don't feel like forgiving them, so I won't actually be forgiving them. I'll just be faking it. What do you say to that person? Well, I think Jesus didn't really want to go to the cross. Remember in John 12, he says, God, if there's Father, if there's any way to get out of this, 
I know you, I know you and I've thought of everything and we, there's nothing else we need to think about or can think about, but if there's another way, I don't want to do this, but he went anyway. Yes. So chose. it's not about feeling. It's about recognizing the value of the blood of Jesus. It's choosing in faith to believe that the blood's enough. Okay. It's a choice. So choosing the action or choosing the transaction, the right? Transaction. That's the key. Choosing the transaction. And to help you, BC Nation, with that, if you're like, well, I don't want to fake it. I I, I, I got to wait till my heart's in it. Listen, did Jesus fake the crucifixion? You can't Good fake question. a cruc you can't fake a crucifixion. He took the action, left the let the outcomes and results belong to God, the Father, right? But he took the action. And that's what uh, Bruce and Tony are reminding us of right now. Oh, you must yeah. take the action, choose mm -hmm. the action of forgiveness, leave the outcomes and results of that forgiveness to God the Father. That's Absolutely. the key. Yeah. So you gotta choose the crucifixion. What's the crucifixion? Well, it's putting your pride and your ego to death hanging it on a cross and forgiving the person. That's yeah. what that looks like. I met with a, a lady, I don't remember when, a couple of years ago, we were in Israel. We do a lot of, we travel a lot. And we're international all over the place. Anyhow, we were brought into Israel to work with the top 50 um, leaders in the Jewish world and in the Arab world and bring them together through forgiveness. It was powerful. Tony, and, I didn't realize how important you both are. Like, oh, well, seriously. we were not important, but God just, it was crazy who was I'm all playing. there. <laughs> oh my gosh. So anyhow, there's this lady I met who said, I love forgiveness. I've got a story for you. I'm thinking who loves forgiveness, but anyhow, okay, what's your story? And she said two you no, 18 months prior, I was on a bus. Everybody's on a bus. That's how they travel going to the grocery store. And these two Arab men get on and she's from Holland, by the way, she's in Israel to take care of, um, orphaned foster, Arab, foster, foster or, 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 Arab orphans. orphans. There you go. And she said, these two Arab men get on, one goes to the front of the bus, one goes across the aisle for me. And I was sitting by the door, the middle door that has glass. And the guy in the front got up, turned around and started shooting. People were dying all over. And I, I didn't get shot, she said, but the man across the aisle jumped on me with a knife and began to stab me. Now she was 76 years old. And she said, I could barely breathe. My arm was the worst. It was bleeding profusely. And the man left me, went to the next person and the guy with the guns coming towards me. So I acted like I was dead. And then and when he got past me, I'm asking the Lord, help me, help me. Do I run? Do I stay here? I'll bleed it out. I don't know what to do. She said, he, I felt the Holy Spirit said, get out of your seat and go through. Cause when he, when the guy shot, he shot the glass out of the middle door. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, crawled out through the middle door. Now I'm on the streets of Jerusalem. And I cry out to God and I said, God, please send somebody to help me, help me. And she would tell you that she did tell me this. I've got it on video. She said, God said to me clearly, I will not send anybody to help you until you choose to forgive the person who just tried to take your life first. And she's like, what? I have to forgive this person that just tried to kill me first. And then you'll send someone to help me. She said, but I heard it clearly. So out loud, she said, I made a choice. And I said, God, I choose to forgive this man that just tried to take my life. And as soon as she said those words, this car, Mercedes showed up next to her. A Jewish man got out, put her in his car, wrapped her, her arm, which is the worst, with his T-shirt he took off, got her to the hospital. They put her on a gurney. She looked back to thank this man for bringing her there. And he was gone. There was no one there. It was like no one was there. And she was like blown away at that. She healed in a week. The doctors couldn't believe her healing. And a couple months later, she wanted to test out her freedom. So she went back and got on that same bus, sat in the exact same seat to test out how she felt about being there. And she said, I had such peace. I had, I had complete peace the entire time. And in fact, next door to her in the emergency room, it through the, on the other side of the curtain was one of the assailants who had also been wounded in the attack. And, and yet she had such peace over it all. And she would sit here and tell you today, I didn't feel like forgiving, but God made it clear that that was what, that was the pathway to my forgiveness. That was how I glorified and showed him off the most. And she forgave him and was set free and healed. Is it selfish to forgive? It's, it can be, I guess, in some ways, but it, it, it benefits us, but it's not selfish when you do it because it's the blood of Jesus that you're honoring. When you're honoring the cross it's actually an act of generosity and gratitude mm -hmm. that because of what God has given to me, I'm willing to share it with somebody else. 
So do I get benefit from it? Yes, but I'm actually, is it selfish to glorify God? Well, do we get benefit when we glorify God? Absolutely. But it's it's actually pointing the direction to God and God, we, God never receives anything from us. He doesn't overwhelmingly supply back to us. I think you answered that beautifully. That was a setup question. You, you just, that was graceful. Well done. All right. So I'm just having fun here. Uh, Let me ask you this. Um, Have you ever had someone come to your office or on a a video chat and and you're going through your two and a half hour process of forgiveness with them? And within that time frame, you just can't get to the thing. There's no miracle that happens. Mm -hmm. There's, there's nothing, you know, that shifts in them or maybe yeah, no, no, that was cool. That was nice. It was, it was all right. I feel a little better. Have you ever had that? Yeah. Uh, we have a 95% breakthrough rate in one sitting, but there are 5% who, who don't. But the only ones who don't get free are the ones who refuse to do what we suggest. To go into their heart. When they don't actually, from their heart, they're still holding on saying, yeah, I need, it's, it's the cross plus. Yeah, I'll accept Jesus, but they got to do something too. They, mm. uh, they, they got to have something. So until I yield and honor the, the sacrifice of Jesus for me and say, yeah, that's enough. And I ask them a question oftentimes, if the blood of Jesus will not satisfy you for this, exactly what would? Exactly, yeah. And so, if, and if they walk out, I go, well, the torment's going to get worse. And so when, you, when you're done, when you're tired of the torment, call us, which has happened on mm-hmm. several occasions. So, yeah. Yeah. Have people take, come back? Yes. Yeah, that 5%? Works. Oh, yeah. I had one lady say she refused to forgive because and it was a ministry like it was two ministry women working together and they had a big blowout. And she said, I refuse to forgive her because she's never repented. She never admits her wrong. And I just don't I don't know that I believe in all this stuff. So, no, I'm not doing this. And she stormed out in about two, three days. She calls me and she says the torment is so bad. I can't sleep. It's horrible. Can I come back? Well, I was busy. I had a full schedule, so she had to wait a week. So um, she came back a week later. She said, I'm ready to forgive now. And I said, okay. So I took her through. She forgave all this. She left my our offices and went to her home and called me 45 minutes later. She said, you're not going to believe this. I said, oh, probably right. will. Probably will. <laughs> she said, I just got home. And in my mailbox was a letter. It was postmarked the day that I made the appointment with you. The second time. The second time. And it was from this woman who said, who's never admitted her wrong to me. And she sent me this letter going through everything she did that wounded me. Everything I just forgave was in this letter. And she was asking me to forgive her. Of course, I already did. But they've been reconciled since then. Because, you know, reconciliation and forgiveness are not the same thing. Mm -hmm. You can choose to forgive somebody and be free, but still not have a relationship with them. Because they have to repent in order for reconciliation to come together. Yeah. 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 You know, uh, earlier you said something that uh, was confronting to me, Tony. You said you don't have to, forgiveness is between you and God. You don't have to go and actually address the other person. And then here's why I was confronting, because Bruce, earlier than that, you said, well, in the Bible, Jesus says, before you come to me, go and forgive the person that you have unforgiveness with, right? Before you show up to the courtroom, go forgive your brother, lest he throw you in jail, right? So help uh, narrow that gap between those two conflicting uh, statements, if you will. All right. I think, I think you're conflating a couple of things. Uh, One, when I, when when we say go, he says, go, that doesn't mean go to them and forgive them. He says, go forgive them. So there's no actually in that Mark uh, 11 passage. He says, just if your brother's if you come to God in prayer and you have something against your brother, forgive, right? And then oftentimes people confuse. There's a passage that Jesus says, when you come to the altar and you realize your brother has something against you, go make it right Mm -hmm. and then bring your altar. Well, Mm -hmm. that's the one who's done the wounding. That's the repentant person. God calls us to forgive but the initiation of the relationship is with the repentant side. So I come to the table of, of, of reconciliation and sit there with the Father, Son, and the Spirit having a great time at the table. But I don't go to the person who's been done the wounding. Their job is to repent, to change their mind about what they did, and they come to the table. So if I'm in this, if I'm in that chair, I need to come and make it right. 
So if I'm the one that did the wound, if I'm the one who that did the wound, I go, I go and ask forgiveness. But if I'm done. the one who's been wounded, I come to God and I let the Holy Spirit work in them and bring them. Because if they'll reject the Holy Spirit, it's a small mm. thing to reject me. Mm. Okay, so, thank you for clearing that up. Uh, and I think that did it. So BC Nation, if you're the perpetrator mm -hmm. in the unforgiveness, uh, it is on you yes. right, to go yep. and repent. Make it right. Mm -hmm. First repent to God for what you did, then go repent right. to the person you hurt, you yeah. wounded, right? Um, however, if you have been the one that has been wronged or hurt, what Tony and Bruce are saying is go to God and surrender it to God, choose the forgiveness, and then leave the outcomes and results of creating a repentful heart in the perpetrator Absolutely. to God. Leave You're it to absolutely. God. Did he's I get that lot, right? He's a lot better at that than we are. If I go to someone that's wounded me and I say, hey, I forgave you today, what is that going to do? That's going to put them in a deeper defense. They're going to push back further from repentance. Mm -hmm. They're going to go, forgive me for what? It's not going to work. And it it's another, it'll be another wound I have to forgive. Because they haven't forgiven so, me. So, or they haven't repented. Right. repented. Excuse me. Yep, yep, yep. All right. I think we got it. I think we just solved the world's problems of unforgiveness right <laughs> here amazing. on the show. It's right amazing. Here. All right. Um, we're about to get into my favorite part of the show. Uh, welcome to the confession round. This is where I'm going to ask you 10 quick fire questions. You'll have about three seconds to answer each. Don't oh. overthink it. It's just for fun. It's like a game show. Are oh, you ready? <laughs> Go okay. Ahead. Oh, yeah. It's you. all on you. Yeah. You're like, Joseph, this is way too much fun. Stop it. All right. Okay. What's your favorite thing about God? Oh, wow. Uh, just his crazy love for us and grace that he pours on us. The fact, yeah. that, the fact that he loves me anyway. The intimate details in our life. He's in every one of them. He lets me see him and hear him daily. Yeah. yeah. What's your least favorite thing about God? Uh, he doesn't give me my way. He's not clear enough sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I just sometimes wish he was more clear. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think the problem lies with God being clear. I think the problem yeah. lies in our antenna and reception. I get it. I get it. But you asked. <laughs> but that's, that's just me. Asked. That's just me. Yeah. Yeah, um, I believe. I John believe. Jackson. Yeah. I believe we're all struggling with something at any given moment of yeah. our life. It's just mm -hmm. part of the human condition. What are you currently challenged with or struggling with either professionally or personally? Our biggest challenge, I think, is our daughter is very ill. She's mm -hmm. 32 with a little girl, loves Jesus like crazy, but she's got multiple issues and uh, with, with a lot of uh, a lot of serious things that has lots of resources required and that that God has to provide because they don't have it. And yeah. just getting my, we just her, flew her in from away. St. Louis last yeah. night from another doctor we went together with. So she's, yeah, yeah. she's in a yeah. bad place, yeah. but God, but she's in God's hands and her faith is strong, but that is a, it is a concern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hear you. What are you most afraid of? Hmm. I don't know. I don't tend to, I, I, I yeah. used to be afraid of failure. Now I'm not. Uh, I just have in my in my growth at this point, I am working really uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning to trust God's sovereignty in my life so much that I quickly turn things to him. And it's because I'm learning more and more about him. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I fear, it's my it's it's a sign my focus isn't on him. Yeah, that's really what we use it as. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. What did you spend way too much time doing this past year? <laughs> hmm. probably social media or television yeah i would think that's probably <laughs> we're tired yeah. that's what we do in the evenings yeah. instead yeah. of just going to bed <laughs> yeah yeah probably what's, too much media yeah what secret fear do you have about people i don't know that i have a secret fear about people i think my historical fear is rejection yeah yeah and that was my deepest wound and since we've forgiven that um I'm, I'm less concerned about that, but that's fine. You know, I, I want people to like me, but now I'm okay if they don't. Yeah, except be accepted. Somewhat. But we're, we're, we're learning to be a break free of, of that. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. isn't one of the questions, but I'm curious. Do you ever coach each other? And then mm -hmm. do you ever get annoyed that, hey, I didn't ask for that coach and back off? Yeah. yeah. Yep. We do yes coach each other. Yes. Yes to them. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we do. Okay. Right, Sometimes got it. Remember, Someone said, uh, uh, remember, what, we have to forgive everyone if everything gets an occupational hazard. So we have to remind each other sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're not forgiving me. Come uh, on. Uh, uh, 
the blood's not enough here, Dave? You know. <laughs> yes. What do you what do you wish you had learned sooner about God? That he is the one that is he's that he's the vine dresser and the vine, and I'm just the branch. And I didn't need to be the vine. I could just rest in him from the big very beginning. He does it all. I just yield. Yeah, mm. and that and that I don't have to work for him. I just need to yield and let him work through me. Yeah. You know, I, that's a, a that's a powerful yeah, that's a powerful one for us high achievers, right? We're not the, mm-hmm. the vine dresser, right? So right. we don't need to prune ourselves, people. Stop pruning yourself. Yeah. You're stealing from God. Don't steal from yeah. God. It's not recommended. What is a new habit you're going to create in your life? Uh, there's always a, a, a challenge to be more disciplined, whether it's with my time, my money, my talents, whatever it's. It's and under some specifics, God has just revealed to me recently. It's like, okay, let's 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 shore this up a bit. More All right. And Bruce, what's a bad habit you're gonna break? Bad habit I'm gonna break. Uh, probably social media. <laughs> we, break, we broke a lot. Yeah, we already. broke a lot about that. Yeah, I need to, I need to just spend less time in that, more time in, in reading. Mm-hmm. Bruce, have you considered that, like unforgiveness, it's just a choice. Yep. Yes. I'm messing with you. I'm messing yes. with you. Yes. Go ahead. That means no. I like you. I need to be messing with sometimes. All right. Pick three words to describe who you are now. Actually, Bruce, why don't you pick three uh, words to describe who your wife is right now? Wow. Uh, I only get three. Yeah. <laughs> only three. Uh, uh, gorgeous. Um, faithful. Mm-hmm. And uh, and gracious. All right, Tony, what do you got for Bruce? Three uh, words. Dependable, trustworthy, full of faith. BC That's Nation, it. did That's you just get the <laughs> BC Nation? Did you just get the woman fuzzies like I did? Come on, mm-hmm. look at that. All right, pick three words to describe who you were before you surrendered all that unforgiveness up to God in your own mm-hmm. heart. Okay, I was fearful, extremely depressed, hmm. and uptight. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was intense, uh, ungracious, and uh, controlling. Wow. I think you both together just summed up all of humanity. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, last question. If you could come back to life after you died, look your family and friends, your children, grandchildren in the eye, and give them only one piece of advice about God, what would you say to them? Don't worry. Yeah. He's enough. He's enough, yeah. And just keep, keep your focus on him. He's enough. BC Nation, stop worrying. God's enough. If you're worrying, you don't believe it. There's your evidence. (laughs) All right. Uh, Now, this is the opportunity where you get to give BC Nation a homework assignment for this week around unforgiveness. What is one action they must take this week if they want to end the misery, if they want to end the torment? What action should they take this week? What do you got for them? Spell it out. Go to forgivingfor.com and on the homepage, scroll down and sign up to receive the forgiveness guide. And they'll receive an email with the guide, which is the protocols. Take, print that off, go in their closet or with someone they trust and sit before God and out loud, forgive the wounds he brings to their mind. It's really simple. It's hard, but it's simple. And uh, and maybe before that, on that same forgivingforward.com, there's a 35, 30, 35 minute sermon that I'm teaching that outlines much of what we share today about the torment and all the place to help you understand why God takes unforgiveness this seriously. And then just make the choice. Yes, God, if you reveal to when you reveal to me, I'm going to ask you and you will. I'll, I will choose to forgive. And we can make this promise. If they were, to, if they do those two things, they will receive freedom. We, we, it's, a, it's guaranteed. Yeah. And if so, we can help you, you can come to the website or there's information to contact us and we'd love to help. Yeah. All right, BC Nation. There's the do-it-yourself approach to unforgiveness. They're giving you the tool that's super generous of them. And BC Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, 
you enjoyed my guest, Bruce and uh, Tony Hebel, Hebel. Um, and you really just love the topic, right? That we address, we address the hard topics, you know? We have the conversations here on Broken Catholic that you just don't get to have out in your life. Let's be real about it. But we need to have. So if you really enjoy this, go write a five-star review on iTunes or Stitcher Radio or go straight to BrokenCatholic.com, BrokenCatholic.com. And if I like your review, I'm going to read it aloud on the show and give you a shout out, just like I'm going to do right now for SHP CEO. Ship CEO, I'm guessing that's your, your handle. SHP CEO who writes, not afraid of the hard topics. The faith community has struggled uh, on its place in discussing hard issues, and we are left with taboo and untouchable topics. That's what I just spoke about, right? These are conversations uh, that don't only need to be addressed by the church as l- at large, but led by the church. They need to be led by the church. Joseph Warren, in Broken Catholic Podcast, through this podcast, leads the national conversation in hard issues through sound biblical principles. That's what we did today. So thank you, SHP CEO, for your five-star review. Uh, BC Nation, go write yours now. We want to hear your voice. Enter the conversation. Don't do your faith alone. Stop it. It's very bad. Stop it. Like, really get connected. All right. So uh, Bruce and Tony, thank you for being on Broken Catholic. I wish you God's love, God's peace, and God's joy in your life and in your ministry. Thank you, Joseph. It's an honor to be on your program yes. and uh, you. get to speak to your listeners. So blessings to you. And your listeners. Yeah. And if we can help in any way, let us know. We're here. <laughs>